Hey, what's up? This one is uh, paper 31 of uh, October, November 2009 of A-Level Math. With that being said, let's move on to the questions we have for you today. Now let's move on to question number one. So here we have to solve this inequality. Now by observation, we can see we have x on both sides, right? If we have that, we tend to square both sides to help us solve this inequality. So square both sides. So you will have 2 minus 3x square less than x minus 3 square. Now we can expand. You will have 4 minus 12x plus 9x square less than x square minus 6x plus 9. Now uh, simplify. Let's send everything to one side. You will have 9 minus 1. That should be 8 x square. Minus 12 plus 6, that should be minus 6x, and 4 minus 9, minus 5 less than 0. Now we have a uh, quadratic equation, so we can find the critical values first. So, same equation, but we equate that to, to 0 to find the critical values. Right. So you will have what? Factorization, that will be 4x times 2x. 5 is just 5 times 1. Now, if you don't know how to factorize, you can always use uh, your formula, right? Now, we have to have minus 6, so it'll be minus 10 plus 4. So, x will have to be 5 over 4. x will have to be minus half. So, these are the critical values of that equation. Now, uh, this is simply 1.25. All that is 0 minus, point, minus 0 0.5. Now, usually, how would you solve this? You will draw a number line, right? This is the value of minus 0 0.5. This is the value of 1.25. Now, this is positive, so my curve will have a shape of this, right? Now, this is the line 0. And according to my equation, I need this to be less than 0. So, below 0 has to be this values over here. Right, so x has to be between the value of minus 0 0.5 and 1.25. Okay, this is the how usually we would do this question and this is what the values of x would be for this inequality. But now, since of course this is an A-level question, we have to test if this is true or not. Now in this answer, we are saying that x can only be between those two values. Now we can check. Well, let me find some value over here and see if it can be outside or not. For example, let me choose x to be 2. If I choose x to be 2, if it works, it, mean that it will mean that this is not the hard limit. For example, let me place this back in my main equation. So let x is 2. My equation is uh, 2 minus 3x less than root, uh, root, sorry, the modulus value of this one. So replace, you will have 2 minus this one, 2 less than that will be minus 1, right? So 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So here you will have 2 minus uh, 6, that will be minus 4, is indeed less than 1. So it works. It means that, well, I can see my equation works. It means this is not the hard limit. I can go past that. So in this case, I will not consider this one. Now how about this one? Let me choose something over here. For example, let me choose x equal to minus 1 to see if that works or not. So we replace, that will be 2 minus 3 times minus 1, less than, uh, here we have minus 1 minus 3. That will be 5 less than 4, which is not true. So it will not work. Anything before this, it will not work. So this is my hard limit. So by this case, I can realize that, well, x can only be more than minus 0 0.5. So by checking the values of this range that we have, we realize, well, this is not the hard limit, we can go past this, it will still work, so it will not be the values included in my equation for this one. But this one we check, well, we cannot go before this, it will not work out, that's why we can only take this one as the uh, set of values for x for question number one. Again, by testing, we need to see if that is okay or not. This is your question number one. Now let's move on to question number two. Here we have to solve the equation, giving your answers correct to 3SF. Now, solving means find the unknown. Here we have the x to find in this question. So here we have 3x plus 2 is equal to 3 power x plus 3, 2. 
Now how can we solve this? So one by one, uh, we can try to uh, break this down. What is this? Well, by the laws of indices, it is same as saying this is 3 power x multiplied by 3 power 2. Now, to make our life easier, we can say, well, let 3 power x be called y for now. So you have 3 power 2 is 9. Now you have 9y is equal to y plus 9. If that makes sense, right? Now, uh, what can I do is I can uh, definitely send everything to one side. You will have what? You will have 9y minus y, which is 8y, is equal to the value of 9. So y will be 9 divided by 8. So finally, y obviously is not what we're trying to find. y is 3 power x is 9 divided by 8. Right. Now, as you can see, x here is as a power. I want to bring this down. I have to apply log on both sides. So by doing this, I can bring this down. x will have to be log of 9 over 8 divided by log 3. So here we have log 9 over 8 divided by log 3. And that should be 0 0.107 correct to 3SF. I guess the main point here we have to understand the laws of indices. We can break this down as you can see and then obviously uh, simplify this and simplify this. This is just 9. Send everything to send the same variable to one side and then find the value of x step by step as you can see over here. That will be your question number 2. Now let's move on to question number 3. The sequence of values given to you by this formula right here uh, it converges to the value of alpha, but we have an initial value of x equal to equal to 3. Now, using this formula, we have to find the value of alpha correct to 2 decimal place, giving the results of each activation to 4 decimal place. So pretty easy. We know x1 is equal to the value of 3. So for question number 1, we just have to use our calculator, right? So 3 is our value of 1, first answer. Now let's plug these into our main equation. So here we have 3 answer over 4 plus 15 over answer cube, right? So this is the main equation. So every time I just have to press equal for the next value. So here we have x2, x3, x4, x5, x6 and so on and see how many iteration do we need that'll be 2.80056 2 2.7834 2.7832 2.7832 so it seems to be stuck right here so 2.7832 Obviously, the values will be correct to two decimal place. So, as you can see, so x will have to be 2.78, correct to two decimal place. Now, for part two, we have to state an equation satisfied by the alpha. Obviously, using this thing right here, we have to find the equation derived. It, it is derived from. How do we do this? Ignore the subscript. So, you will have what x on one side is equal to 3x over 4 plus 15 over x cubed. Let's try to uh, simplify and solve this equation. So first thing what I can do is I can multiply um, every one by 4 to remove this base. So you will have 4x is equal to 3x plus 60 over x cubed. Now I can multiply every one by x cubed to remove this base. You have 4 x power 4, that should be 3, x power, that should be 4 as well, right? So, and plus 60, right? So right now I can send this over here, you will have 4x power 4 minus 3, that should be x power 4, is equal to 60. So here we go, so we have this equation formed from this uh, little thing that we did, we have this is the main equation we are solving. So x will have to be what? 60 this one so 60 power 0 
that should be the value of 2.78315 but again this is not what we're trying to find where i'm just testing if that gives me the same value as this one but the exact value will be 60 this one here you go and this is your answer x for the exact value that we are trying to find or alpha same thing this is your question number three now let's move on to question number four so here we have an equation of y equal to exponential uh, minus 3x 10 of x right now we have to find the x coordinates of the stationary points on the curve in this interval now you have to be careful x goes to negative value and the positive value as well so on both sides giving you answers correct to three decimal places so one by one so what is the first thing we know well it's at stationary points what do we know dy by dx have to be zero so that's what you have to know to begin with so y has been given to you by this equation right this is what this is a product this times this so we have to find dy by dx by using the the product rule so dy by dx will be what first write this first one as it is times d by dx of this one will be then plus the second one as it is and then times dy by dx of this one that should be exponential thing the same thing times minus three now simplify you will have an exponential this one minus three exponential this one ton of x this one now obviously we have to equate that to zero to find the stationary points now let's try to solve this uh, equation so let's try to first see what can we do we'll try to factorize we have this and this common you will have exponential minus 3x outside and then you will have sec square x minus uh, 3 10 x that will be zero right now here we can have this value exponential minus this is zero or we can have this one All right now this will obviously not be possible why you can check that will become minus this ln of zero now ln cannot be cannot take zero so it will not be possible so we can only solve this one now by observation we can see we have 10 here we have sec square x so what is this actually we have seen this before right when you have sine square plus cos square is one we divide by cos square you will have what tan square plus one is equal to sec so sec square is this plus one so replace you will have tan square x plus one minus three tan x now let's rearrange you will have what tan square x minus 3 tan x plus 1 is 0 so we have to solve this equation for the value of here we have the value of x here you go so how would you solve this again this one is in terms of tan x for now or if you're confused we can do this well let's do this make out let's make our life easy i can say well let y equal to tan x just to begin with you will have y square minus 3y plus 1 to find y that'll be uh, minus b that should be 3 plus minus uh, b square which is 9 right minus 4 times a times c that should be 5 divided by 2a that should be just 2 all right so let's see what value we have so y will give me 3 plus root 5 divided by 2 that is 2.61803 or y will be 3 minus root of 5 divided by 2 0 0.382 so now we have these two values for y now let's use tan back in our main equation because again we're not trying to find the value of y here right so put it back you will have what you will have on one side you will have tan of x which is 2.618 this is positive it will be 
in the first quadrant and in this quadrant. This is what this is the value of x directly. This is the value of this plus x. So let's solve. So x will be tan inverse of this one. Here we have to use radians because it is given to you in radians. So tan inverse of 2.618. That will be 1.206. That is the first value. And then we have we have we have to add the value of pi. You will have 4.348. Let's write this for now, right? For now, let's write everything. And then in the end, we can just uh, simplify and see what can we use. Now for this one, you will have what? Tan of x is equal to 0 0.382. Again, it is a positive value. It will be in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. This is the value x directly. Same thing, this is pi plus x. Tan inverse. 0 0.382, that should be 0 0.36. Uh, 4, 9, or plus pi, that'll be 3.5065. So we have these values now. Now we know x has to be between what values? Let me write this down. x has to be between the value of minus pi, so minus half pi, sorry, that should be minus pi over 2, that should be minus 1.57 and 1.57 so in f at first look you will say well this one is seems to be outside and this one seems to be okay this one seems to be okay and this one seems to be outside so at first we can write these two values for now x is equal to 0 0.365 correct to 3sf and 1.21 correct to 3sf now as you have seen, x can be on the negative side as well. So how can you find some values on the negative side? We tend to take these values here, minus 2 pi. Let's see what we get potentially. Again, negative side is only direction. It's not a thing about negative, it's about the direction. So 4.348 minus 2 pi. That is minus 1.94. And this one is what? 3.5065 minus 2 pi. That will be minus 2.78. Now, as you can see, still, these values will be too much. It will be outside of this range, so we will not take them. In that case, we will only take these two values that we have, which is x is equal to 0 0.365 and 1.21. And these are the two values that we have. We have tried, huh? we have tried, but the values are just outside of this range, so we will not take it. Okay? And that is your question number four. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.